Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jens and in today's video I'm going to talk about GitX and dependency injection. So what is dependency injection? Well, to put it simple, all it really is, is if you uh, create an instance of a class and use that instance in different parts of your uh, program. This is a really useful tool to use uh, when you want to keep your app sizes pretty small and so to also to make sure that you don't unnecessarily use uh, too much of your resources. This is also one reason I think many people who are starting with programming uh, usually find a lot of performance issues down the line as their project scales up uh, because uh, they might be creating so many instances of different classes, different variables, which is not really um, necessary in most of the cases. So dependency injection in GitX is uh, pretty simple and straightforward. And this is, I think, one big reason why uh, the performance of your application stay really good. And this is one area where I think GitX really is uh, useful because it handles all of the dependency injection in the background for you, uh, where you don't actually have to um, do it yourself. So today I'll show you the different ways you might do dependency injection with GitX and how they sort of work so that you might have a better understanding and make a, the right decision when you create your own projects. So let's get into it. So in the previous video, we actually uh, covered a little bit of dependency injection, but now I just want to make it a little bit more clear. Um, so if you look into the home binding, uh, what you'll see is what I'm doing is uh, git.lazyput. And basically there's three types of uh, dependency injection for GitX. You have git.put, uh, git.lazyput, and then uh, git.find. Uh, put that there, and then you just have to specify. So here's our three main uh, dependency injection methods. And uh, what they do is pretty much the same thing. They're trying to make an instance of um, a class. So get.put will create an instance of the home controller. And in this case, uh, whenever you call this uh, method, take those out for now and show you an example. So uh, in the home controller, let me actually on the init method, uh, let's just uh, uh, print home um, controller has been created. Okay, so in this in uh, in this case, we will know um, if the home controller the instance has been created or not so let me just show you the console down here a bit more clear and so once i refresh the page so now we can see an instance has been created from down here now if i actually take this one out and replace that with get dot uh, lazy put Let's refresh. Ah, so now you can see uh, we've actually called this method, but uh, the instance of the controller hasn't been created yet. Uh, the only time uh, it will be created is if you actually use it. And in this case, it's the plus arrow down here. So when I press the plus arrow, that's actually when it's been created. And that's when you can actually change these variables. And the last one would be get.find. Uh, now get.find actually has a lot of issues because uh, in this case, uh, I would not actually use get.find because what it does, it, it looks for an instance that already has been created. So if you're maybe in another page or another widget and you wanna use this controller rather than creating a new instance of the controller, use get.find, which actually just um, points to uh, the controller that's already been created. 
so let me refresh here uh, and let me actually just use get.put okay so another thing about uh, get.put is whenever you uh, navigate out of this page if this page is not in the stack anymore uh, the controller the instance of the controller would be removed so there's a way we can actually keep the controller um, sort of alive so to demonstrate this uh, what I'm gonna do is in the app bar uh, just create a icon button um, let's see here and show you how we would actually navigate so what I would do is to get dot uh, to named and you specify by saying routes dot uh, login okay so now uh, <clears throat> I'm actually gonna navigate to the uh, login page and the icon would be an icon uh, arrow let's see if that works okay there we go there we have an icon so now we can see that um, we've actually navigated to the login view uh, but now I actually want to oh, I just have to set it correctly in the app pages down here I think it's still saying container so login view uh, there we go so in this case uh, I have a home page and a login page and both of them have the same bindings so if I go to all right so I've actually navigated to my login view at this point and we can see okay so uh, now all I have to do is actually change this to from the login controller to the home controller okay uh, refresh again so navigate to the home controller and let's also just um, turn this into a scaffold with an app bar Uh, just change the color maybe okay so it actually gives us a default back arrow all right so as you can see here uh, we can actually navigate to and from maybe I'll also just um, put a title there and just say um, login page So how we can solve for this is actually just replacing the uh, lazy put with a normal get dot put and uh, as you can see here once the controller has been created uh, I can navigate to the login screen and navigate back so even if the page is not there anymore the um, controller the instance of the controller is actually uh, hasn't been disposed yet and it'll only be disposed if uh, this home view uh, is not in the stack anymore but if we want to solve for that we can actually set a permanent to true so what this means is whenever this uh, controller is created it will actually stay present throughout the um, throughout the app lifecycle basically so even if we remove this uh, home view from the stack uh, it'll still be alive so to speak so now what I'm gonna do next is uh, turn uh, use get.put and in the uh, routes in the pages I mean I'll actually remove the bindings so this login view is actually not connected to um, any instance at all 
but the good thing is it's using git widget of the home controller which actually does use git.find for that instance so if i refresh as you can see the controller has been created i can actually navigate to the login page and uh, because it's a get widget i can actually still use this controller and navigate back and also use it in the same instance so anyway guys comment down below if there are specific ways you guys like to do dependency injection and if there's different ways of implementing a specific feature if you like this video please subscribe if you want to see more like this and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye